What's going on everybody? I'm Jory Goodman, the Time Teller. I hope you had an awesome weekend. It's now a beautiful Monday here in Southern California. I hope it's beautiful wherever you are. And uh, yeah, I just wanted to spend a little bit of time today answering a question that I've been getting pretty much since the beginning of this channel. And uh, yeah, you guys have wanted to know which is the most impressive watch that I own. So what's the most impressive watch in my collection? And I gotta be honest, I've kind of shied away from that question in the past because I felt it was just simply too subjective, right? Um, I mean, impressive to who? Impressive to you? Impressive to me? Impressive to other watch enthusiasts? Impressive to the general public? These are all different things, probably. But the more I thought about the question, the more I realized that this could be a very valuable opportunity to give you guys some insight on how I feel about watch collecting as a whole. Link wants to be in the video today. Where have you been? Where have you been? We want more Link. We want more Link. They like you more than they like me. He's still alive and well, guys. He's just been napping in my room because I got a new bed. So uh, he's been more interested in the bed than in the YouTube videos recently. I don't know, but I guess now he, uh, he wants to return to the big screen. Well, this video is sponsored by Cat Hair. It's 3.05 p.m. Let's get down to business. Okay, so my most impressive watch. Well, I think to another watch enthusiast, my most impressive watch would have to be my Rolex Bubbleback 2940. I mean, just going by what I hear you guys say here on YouTube and uh, what some of my friends on Instagram are saying, you know, it makes sense that that watch would be interesting to another watch enthusiast. It's very old from the 1940s. It is a Rolex. It's a very uncommon model of Rolex. And uh, yeah, it's in pretty decent condition, all things considered. Now, uh, speaking of the condition, I can't share that watch with you today because it is in service. Uh, if you guys follow this channel, you know that last week or so, uh, I dropped it and I broke the crystal. So that thing's getting repaired and hopefully I can get it back here soon and uh, share it with you guys. So yeah, in a room of watch enthusiasts, you know, that watch is gonna get a lot of attention. It's gonna get a lot of questions. People are gonna wanna take pictures of it. Every time I make a video about it here on YouTube, you guys are very interested in the comment section. Every time I post anything about it on Instagram, I get a ton of questions about that little Rolex bubble back. But when I wear that watch in public, nobody looks twice at it. I think the general public is much more interested in things that are a bit flashier, a bit bigger, a bit more eye grabbing. And uh, I have an example. My Hamilton Jazzmaster Open Heart, okay? That watch gets a ton of attention. And I think to the general public, it's considered very impressive, even though I think it retails just above $1,000. You can find it for a lot less if uh, you know where to look, but that watch is nowhere near as impressive or as significant as that Rolex bubble back. But uh, if you put both of those on a table, people are gonna pick up the Hamilton Jazzmaster way before they even look at my little Rolex bubble back. And why is that? Well, it's a little bit bigger of a watch. It's got these interesting cuts, you can see the jewels inside the movement. Uh, it's got that rose gold finish on it. It just looks like it should be very, very expensive and it's really not, but the mass public doesn't care about that. They care about how it looks. If it looks like it should be expensive, then boom, it's expensive. So I know a lot of you guys are gonna be wondering which watch in my collection is most impressive to me and uh, you guys are going to be sick and tired of this watch by now, but I've got to give it to the Seiko Sarbo 6.5 cocktail time. I mean, it's hard for me to even wrap my mind around the fact that they offer watches that are this well done, this refined, and this beautiful for around $500. I mean, it's, it's just crazy to me. Okay, so let me kind of summarize the video so far. So within the watch community, it seems that my Rolex bubble back is the most impressive. Within the general public, it seems that my Hamilton Jazzmaster Open Heart is the most impressive. And to me personally, I've gotta say, the Seiko Sarbo 6.5 Cocktail Time is the most impressive. But there's one watch that uh, it seems like no matter who you are, seems to get the most attention out of any other watch in my collection. And it just so happens to be the least expensive watch in my collection. See, this is kind of what I'm getting at. Price is irrelevant. For some reason, it seems like watch enthusiasts, random people, and myself can't stop looking 
at my SSC081 Seiko Solar Chronograph Compass. This watch is just crazy. I mean, I don't know what it is about it, but people will stop me on the street and ask me where they can get this watch. It's, it's ridiculous. Um, there's nothing incredibly captivating about the watch. Like, it's not super flashy. It's not terribly large. It's not, you know, gold plated. It's just a very nice watch. And I love it. It's easily one of my favorite watches in my collection. And again, you can find this watch for like under $200. It's easily the least expensive watch in my collection. So guys, I hope what I'm trying to convey within this video really resonates with you. And it's that price doesn't matter. Okay, just because something's super expensive does not mean it's really good. And just because something's super inexpensive doesn't mean it's total crap. Price is irrelevant. I mean, listen, I wear my solid gold Ebel 1911 chronograph with the El Primero movement, just a super impressive watch. And uh, no one really cares. In fact, I did a video on that watch and I think it's got like the least views out of any other video on my channel. I wear a Rolex Submariner and as I've said before, it's pretty much invisible. But something about this less than $200 solar powered Seiko is uh, captivating and I, and I mean, heck, I love this watch. I made a video about this watch talking about how I feel this is the best chronograph for under $200 and uh, I think it can contend with watches much, much more expensive than itself. And uh, I urge you to check out the Seiko SSC 081. Just a very, very impressive watch to me, to other watch enthusiasts and to the general public. So guys, I've said it before and I'll say it again. I don't like expensive watches. I don't like cheap watches. I don't like Swiss watches. I don't like Chinese watches. I just like watches, okay? So stop focusing on the price and just love the watch you have for what it is. Don't be scared to have an opinion. Don't let anybody make you feel bad for however much money you've spent on your watch because at the end of the day, it's your watch and you gotta love it. All right guys, well thank you so much for tuning in. It was a very difficult question to answer, but uh, I hope this video was helpful to you in some way. And guys, I wanna remind you that my 10,000 subscriber watch giveaway is still going on until Black Friday, so you still got a week to enter that giveaway. You could win a brand new Seiko SKX 007. So with that being said, guys, if you haven't subscribed yet, please click that subscribe button. It takes one second and it helps me out a ton. And while you're at it, you can click that little bell icon so you do not miss an episode of The Time Teller. There's just so much more awesome content on the way and you don't wanna miss it. I'm telling you guys, please like, comment, and subscribe. Share this with other watch enthusiasts, other people that you think would enjoy this. I'm Jory Goodman, the time teller, and always remember, I didn't invent time, I just tell it.